Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. This is our monthly tech meet, and we're going to be working on Silver Shadow height control components. <clears throat> so, when I took it apart, I purposely didn't tell you the differences between these because now is when it counts, not when it comes apart. As you can see, we got actually we got two of these that are exactly the same. And we got one that is different. It just doesn't have that nylon on the end, okay? That's the only difference. That's the only difference. But also, we got one that had a bunch of shim washers on it, and then two with a big fat washer. So here's the deal. The two with the big fat washers go on the long end, this end. The one with the adjustable washer, which is one of the <coughs> nylon-tipped ones, goes on the other side. So the other side... We can't put them on wrong, right? There's only one that it screws into, because the other one has this. That's the, well, it's actually the front side, but I, I'll call it the back side now. Now on these two, the ones with the same size washers, you don't want to mix them up. So one thing to remember is that one of these has a spring on it, right? Well, actually, they both do. So. One of these has a spring that fits in on that shoulder, okay? And the other one, which is this one, the long spring goes inside. So that's how I always remember. And which makes it a heavier spring. <laughs> well, it makes it work better, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And then this little valve here is what sets against that piston that goes in and out. And, and you look at it, and it's, so you could put that in backwards. Right? But what I always try to remember is that this sits on that. So if you look, the matching, it's sealing off here, right? And then this right here is actually going against the seat on the housing that's around here. So that's why there's two circles. So the later one of these is, it's, it looks like this, but it's just got two humps like this. So there's a hump out here. At this point, I always try to put them back in the way they came so that this seat is against there because it's already pretty well worn in. But I got to put this valve in first. So this thing I just drop in there and then I walk it around with a screwdriver or a seal pick until it goes down. So now what I'll do is check its operation. So now I'm down, it's seated against that piston. And if I take this and work it, you'll see it goes up and down. See that? See my seal pit going up and down. So that's 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 right. Um, and this, it's like flipping a coin, <laughs> right? You can drop it and hope it goes the right way. But in my experience, if I put it in backwards, it always flips the right way. So it didn't. So I shouldn't go to Vegas this week. Let's try it this way. There it is. So if you look in there. It's in with the hump up. You don't see that indent in there, the ring. Can you see in there? Yeah. yeah. So if you look in there, you don't see those little indent marks. You just see a nice virgin white plastic. So there it is. Then this spring goes in. Then we can put these O-rings on these things. And just put them all on real quick. Not damage my finger. Can you lube those O-rings too? You can lube those too. You don't have to worry about getting them. I I will uh, I will lube them when I put them in. If I'm tr I lube them before I try to do this, and they flip out of my hands, sure. and I sit here for an hour. That lube doesn't affect the hydraulic fluid. Or that's what I was no, it's compatible. This is a is it girling or rubber grease, and it's based with castor oil. So the original brake fluid for these cars had castor oil in it mm -hmm. so as a lubricant. That's something to watch for. What's that? The compatibility. Yeah, it's very important.
All right, so our O-rings are all on. So now we got to do is put it back together. So back to this. The one with the shoulder goes with this light spring because it fits on there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just run that in by hand. See, I put the lube on now. And one thing to remember when these are, you see this big head on this thing, right? And this big fat washer, you think you got to, you don't because all the sealing is done by the O-ring. You just have to snug it so it doesn't loosen up. A lot of people forget that part. Is there pork settings for those? Or? I'm sure there are. Probably. Seems to be for everything. It's, it's that's Ronnie's that's the torque right yeah. there. You take it to this point and then a snade more or a skosh. He pulls the wrench and goes click. <laughs> so here's where we can get confused. We got to remember we got the one with the spacer washer. One real easy to, way to remember is both the fat washers go on one side. Okay. So we'll go ahead and give this some lube now. When we took it apart, where's my wire? I laid all this out for you guys. Um, and the way this goes, just so you know, in here, is this goes like this, all right? That's how it sits inside the car in, in this housing right there. And what happens is this other valve comes from the other side and it sits in there, and this is what that, it's spring-loaded, okay? So the trick is, how do you get this, all these lined up and in there, all right? So I have a trick. Pay close attention. Simple coat hanger, modified. Stick up through the hole so it sits up. Then you just stack them on. Okay, that's in the right way. Springs in the right way. And then this lines up perfectly. You're done. It's almost like cheating. Deesh. Think you'd hear that? <laughs> Edit. <laughs> All right. Might as well tighten these. See that? That's it. Click. Yeah. You know they got new torque wrenches that beep. No way. Oh, yeah, one of my guys uses it on everything, which is fine. I know he's not tightening things too much. So now, we're almost done here, boys. Um, this is the part that's got to go against that long spring and all that. So what I do, this the long end goes down. So I just kind of work it around with a seal pick. And this is crucial. You want to make sure it springs and returns. And I mentioned earlier, sometimes they break. So if this is, for whatever reason, is tweaked, and this sticks, then it'll break eventually, and you don't want that. So there's that. And then I think this is what these washers is set to a certain height that it rusts against. And that's why they have the spacer washers. So it's important to know. It's, I usually find it better to take something apart and put it back together the Just same way the it same. came apart, yeah. In my experience. Unless it had a problem, obviously. Okay, now this is the last part that goes in there and where did it, oh, it went this way. See, how did he remember that? Because you're spider. I've done more than one, that's why. So. This goes there. I know this comes off on this side, so that lines up right there. Put the snap ring in. Seat it. Turn it. Okay. And then this one, this just should be pretty easy to figure out how that goes. So there's only two ways to do it, and that that's not going to work. Remember, they were parallel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's how it goes. You don't put any steel in the rounders. No, because it's a uh, it's a tapered fit. Yeah, it's a tapered fit. I forget what that one is, but they have that's a single flare, and they have double flares too. So there's that. The only thing we have to do now is put the arm back on. I mean, did you tighten this one? I didn't have to because I didn't loosen it. Oh, I pulled it off right, with the snap right. ring, yeah. Sorry, thank you. Okay, so here's where we can run into trouble, right? So this I scribed to make sure I put it in the right place. Oh, I see. 
and you always want the nut to come down. Usually there's like a locking washer on the top of that nut. You see this? Can you see the scribe marks? Yeah. And you go, well that doesn't look like the same position, but that's only because I'm 180 off and this is where it's supposed to be. So, I'm tighten that. There we go. So that's how the height control valve is done.